Hello, I know it's been a while since the last video, but today we've got quite the little uh, comeback. We've got a Dodici Cylindri by Ferrari right behind it. We're going to go for a POV drive. You're going to come with me and live it as if you were behind the wheel. But just before we get in and drive, let's have a quick look around the exterior because what a beauty. I wasn't sure when I saw the first photos of this come out, but when you see it in the flesh, it is absolutely stunning. I'm not sure about this color, Giallo Monte Carlo, it's called, it's like a yellowish, goldish, and not the spec I'd go for, but this front uh, kind of black painted bit between the two headlights, which is an homage, a uh, blast to the past of the Daytona, actually looks really good. And they've said they will not paint this, no matter who you are or how you ask. That will always have to remain in black as was thought out by the designers. A few little things I want to show you around front. Of course, we have loads of carbon. We're going to have a quick little skim around the exterior because the main purpose of what we want to do is actually just get behind the wheel. These huge monoblock wheels. So you do not want to curb one of these because that would be very expensive. Of course, massive carbon ceramic brakes, more carbon. You've got the hidden door handles. You've now got the glass roof. You also, for the first time, can get the car in convertible spider at the same time as the coupe. They've come out at exactly the same time. And then round the back, it's much more futuristic looking than it was before. So you have these rectangular exhaust, uh, and now they've gone from circular to rectangular. I'm actually, I don't know if I'm a huge fan of that. Maybe I need to get used to it, but so far, not quite used to it, I'm not sure if I'm a massive fan. They've gone rectangular with the lights as well, if I unlock the car. So see, you've got these rectangular little lights, but it's actually a light bar that goes all the way across back here. You've got a huge diffuser, which is also your bumper. <laughs> so yeah, so hopefully you don't hit anything in the back because that's gonna be an expensive part to replace too. And then you've got this kind of slightly odd looking uh, black section in the back, this like triangle. Now the reason that's that way is because these on each side, these two pieces here, are active aero. And so those little winglets will come up on each side uh, between 60 and 300 kilometers an hour to help with downforce. And they give you about two, uh, 50 kilograms of downforce at 250 kilometers an hour. Um, and the reason they haven't done a huge wing all the way across is, and I think I'll probably have to unlock the car again if I'm able to find the key in time. Oh, actually, let me show you the key while we're here. It's the, you know, standard new Ferrari key. Well, the reason they haven't done that big wing is because of the boot. They wanted to have easy access to the boot. Um, and so you couldn't have a big active rear wing all the way across. As simple as that. <laughs> Nothing more technical than that. And also Ferrari always want to keep the look uh, kind of as fluid and natural as possible and not too kind of uh, dictated by aerodynamics, especially on the non, you know, TDF GTO version of their Grand Tora. Now the boot is actually really spacious, as you can tell, bunch of camera gear here. You've got your spec list as you do in all Ferraris. And you've also got, as always in these V12 Ferraris, that rear deck shelf there that you can put loads of stuff on. The interior has been completely reseen too. We will have mainly a skim around that as we're driving. So let me put the GoPro on my head. So let's get the engine started first, because that's kind of what we all are here for. And it's what the car is named after, the Dodici Cylindri, the 12 cylinder, that naturally aspirated engine. So we whack our key down here in its perfect little slot. Uh, and here's the interior. So new interior, loads of screens, digital screen here in front of me, huge 10 inch new screen which actually has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard and basically everything happens here. So for example my lift, I say my lift as if this is my car, I've only got it for like, uh, well I think we've only got another 30 minutes or so. Um, so everything gets controlled here, um, it's a much better display, much better screen uh, than there was before, before you used to control things uh, down here in previous models. You've still got the haptic controls we'll get on to that in a bit and then you have this passenger display uh, screen here which is cool you can do your seats which are heated cooled and even massage massage seats in a ferrari how cool is that anyways <laughs> i thought that was pretty cool so you have that screen which i think is great you have this screen and then you have the screen in front of you which is kind of your main screen 
Uh, carbon kind of a bit all over. This little cubby right here is actually carbon on the bottom, so I'm not sure you'll be wanting to put anything that could scratch that down there. Great sound system, awesome view over the rear arches through the mirrors. And then you've got that, oops, sorry, there's my jacket there, but you've got that shelf, which is easily accessible. And this glass roof, which brings in loads of light. A day like today, when it's not the best weather, loads of light comes through that glass, which is awesome. Now, before we set off, it'd be rude not to rev. We have a naturally aspirated VTOL. Let's open both windows so we get the noise properly. And behold the sound of this thing. So that's nice, right? But it now, this V12 revs all the way to nine and a half thousand. So listen to this. Woo that is pretty cool. So let's go into first. Let's start in sport. Now, sh we should really be in wet, but we don't have that long to make this video. So let's just start straight in sport, shall we? Let's not hang around. Let's do it properly from the get go. So lift up here. That's actually quite nice to have the lift button right there, easily accessible. Okay, let's get out of here. There's not great visibility, so let's get out of this quickly. There we go. Aha, uh -huh, and a tunnel straight away. Isn't that convenient timing? Almost like I planned it. Wow. Okay, so let's have a go. Ooh, sounds pretty good, right? Pretty good start. <laughs> oh, it is slippery. Right, we're heading straight into a town, but that allows us to kind of get to know this interior a bit before we pop it into race mode and have a good time a little later on in the video. So, the haptic controls. Let's talk about it. They're still here. Obviously, in the SF90 and the Pura Sangue and all that stuff, you have these haptic controls. You do get used to them. I haven't spent enough time in the modern Ferraris to really get used to them yet, but I imagine if you know, you're driving this car often, which this car is made for, to be honest. Because there's now the SF90, Ferrari don't need these front engine V12s to be the ultimate performance car anymore. It can kind of sink into that role that it's always had of being that GT car, even more because the SF90 is taken care of, well, we're just gonna smash everything that's on the road and put all of the performance um, aspects into that car. This can sink into being the V12 GT that it kind of has always wanted to be. So compared to an 812 or an 812 Com, Ferrari haven't focused on performance that much. I mean, 830 horsepower, 2.9 seconds uh, to 60, 217 miles per hour, like all that stuff is nuts, right? But it wasn't their number one focus. The number one focus was breadth of ability of this car and character. So, you know, an 812, is pretty much as fast. I mean, it's it's a bit slower, but it's, you know, it's marginal. It's not massive. But where this shines is with all of these new interior gadgets, obviously, but also with this engine that they've brought to the forefront. Now, you may be thinking, but wait, this V12 engine's been around for a while. You're right, since 1947, in fact. But what they have done, which makes a big difference, is do some changes to the gearbox. So it's now an eight speed DCT gearbox. So it's still the DCT, they just added a speed basically, the gear, sorry. And that allows you to make the ratios a little bit slower, despite it revving to nine, uh, sorry, I'm completely messing this up. It allows you to make the ratios a little uh, shorter, despite it revving to nine and a half thousand RPM. There we go, we got there. So nine and a half thousand RPM, <laughs> that was random. <laughs> An army guy giving us the salute. Look at that. That's what you get, I guess, when you're in a Ferrari. Nine and a half thousand RPM and shorter gear ratios makes you be able to enjoy this car a little bit more because you can play with the gears more than you could in, let's say, an 812 where you would just be going so fast, so quickly, that it would be tricky to um, actually kind of enjoy on normal roads the symphony that comes out of this v12 and playing with that v12 with the gearbox where are we going here in this way yes so this should make it a slightly more obtainable level of performance and fun while still having a little bit more power really cool and you'll see when we get on the little roads later it actually really works um now one thing i will say 
on the, because I think this is basically the only negative thing that I can say about this car, the rest is pretty much perfect, <laughs> is yes, the haptic buttons um, aren't exactly what I, right, I think a lot of petrol heads really want for the interior of this car or any Ferrari for that matter. Traction control, traction control, traction control still. <laughs> there is no grip, all the power going to the rear. Anyways, back to the buttons. Yes, I'd love to have an actual tangible engine start stop button. And yes, this all gets a little bit confusing. It's better now that they've done these cutouts than it was before, but still, I don't know. I, I'm not a huge fan of this whole system. And whilst the screens are great and the technology is fantastic now screens tend to age quite quickly so for example an interior i think has always looked great as the interior on bugatti so the veyron and the chiron because there are no screens so even though a veyron will be a 15 20 year old car the interior still looks completely up to date and that's because there's no screens and so it doesn't allow you to see how digitally archaic it is inside when you put a screen like this, technology evolves so quickly that these screens will very quickly look outdated and I worry that that will make this interior look outdated quickly. Anyways, that is basically my only worry about this car because I think the exterior is timeless and I genuinely think this could be peak car and Ferrari because we have all of the technology, right? As you saw, the traction keeping me on the road we have Apple CarPlay, we have massage seats, we have all of the good stuff, right? Woo! We have all of the good stuff, but it hasn't suffered from the technology of its time. So there aren't a bunch of turbocharged, turbochargers, sorry, whacked onto this. There's no hybrid system, it's not electric. It is old school in the mechanics, but new school in the gadgets. And that I think is really cool. And this could be peak. I don't know how much longer uh, we're gonna be able to get engines like this, but could this be the perfect match of those two things coming together? Let's whack it into race mode, and then we should find out. Those gear shifts are getting even cooler, even more intense. <laughs> this car is so fast. Listen to that symphony. So good, so good. How cool is it that Ferrari in 2024 for a 2025 model year car have come out with an 800 horsepower naturally aspirated V12? I mean, yes, bravo. Can we just all appreciate, basically no one's doing it. Can we appreciate that they've managed to do this? And I mean, I doubt there will be much longer of us getting these kinds of cars. So let's appreciate it because it is fantastic. I mean, listen to this. <laughs> and that gearbox just means that you can play around with those gears more. Tie oh, is so good. Anyways, so yes, a naturally aspirated V12. What are things on this car? Let's talk fairly technical. You've got a brake by wire system now. Brake pedal feels absolutely fine to me. I'll be completely honest with you. I've been driving it around and this is about as dry as it's gotten. It's been raining all morning, so I haven't been able to properly push it on the brakes that much. Um, so hard to give you concrete feedback, but from the way I've been using it, which is probably the way a lot of people will be using this on a more common basis, the brake feels fantastic. You have four wheel steering, um, so the at slow speed, it will steer up to three degrees on the rear tires, uh, which is great around town. And then above, I think it's 30 kph, it's then, uh, or 50, I'm not entirely sure, but basically at higher speed, it will then do only one degree angle on the rear tires. Uh, but that really helps you with like lane changing, it helps you on little roads. It basically means that the car will shrink around you. Because when you get into it at first, you have this infinite bonnet in front of you, and it feels big, it feels quite imposing, but I don't know if it's the fact that you're getting loads of daylight into here and you get great visibility and the fact that you've got this four wheel steer, the car kind of shrinks around you. So fairly quickly, it's actually not that imposing. I really thought 
So I'm lucky enough to have driven a, a 599 and, a, and an F12 and they feel more imposing than this does. The 599 just feels huge. It feels like you're driving a train almost in front of you. Whereas this doesn't have to that extent. I mean, maybe it's because the roads we're on are slightly bigger than the ones I'd driven in the UK, but nonetheless, it's not as imposing as I thought. It's extremely comfortable. These seats, so these are the comforts. There's also an option for the sports seats. These ones are, are great. I mean, they're very comfy. I love the look of the sports seats. I'm not sure which I'd go to. I guess it depends on your usage. And it has this breadth of ability, this versatility, this car, where you can just whack it into sport or wet, whack it into auto, and it becomes such a good GT. You got that boot space. You have eight speeds now, so the fuel efficiency is better on the motorway. It's quiet. It's got this visibility. You have all the latest gadgets. I mean, as a GT car, this is pretty much as good as it gets. I'm just going to press on this button down here because that's going to switch our start stop off. Start stop in an 800 horsepower V12 Ferrari does feel pretty ironic, but you know, nonetheless, it's the way it is these days. Now, the noise is incredible. It's maybe slightly down tuned from, um, you know, an F12, a TDF, an 812, things like that, because of all these new filters that you need. Um, but it still sounds amazing. And I think that if you had the convertible version, it would, I mean, obviously you would have more access to that noise. To be honest, that's maybe the version I'd go for because they've assured us during a presentation that we had yesterday that you don't lose anything in the spider version in terms of rigidity. I mean, it is so minute that unless you're a racing driver driving on a racing track, you're basically not gonna be able to feel it. So yeah, I think realistically for 98% of the time, you would just be happier to be able to take the roof off when you can. That's my personal choice. You put in the comments which you would rather have. Now, whilst it is very impressive, as a GT, I'm more interested in this kind of stuff. Woo! See, just driving on roads like this, it's great. I actually had the car on some slightly more twisty roads earlier, so we can skip to those images, but the camera angle I don't think was as good on my head, so you see quite high up. So I apologize for the camera angle, but it may allow you to get a little bit more of a feel for what's going on dynamically. Let's see if we can give it a little bit of acceleration up here. Wheel spin galore, wheel spin galore. <laughs> but this is what it's about. You want it to feel this way. <laughs> Oh, it's an animal. It is a total animal. And I love it. I love it for it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tunnel, tunnel. What on earth? This is a car that is being sold in 2024, 2025. And it sounds like that. And it's naturally aspirated. I mean, how good is that? How can you care about touch buttons and things? Yes, it'd be better, but honestly, that's not why you're buying this car. You're buying this car for that engine, and that is why they have named this the Dodici Cylindri. What a car, what an experience. Shame about the rain, not gonna lie. Oh, this looks like it's gonna be quite a thin little bridge. Interesting. I don't want this video to end. I don't want this experience to end. It is so good. And I've been thinking, I'm like, Seb, you know, you're trying the car out. You need to give some constructive criticism. What are things that you love, but what are also things that woo, that you don't like so much? Honestly, I'd just be saying things for the sake of it. The only stuff I can think of are the stuff we've already mentioned. 
Look at that traction control just holding you in. Stuff that we've already mentioned, but honestly, I don't care about that too much. Oh. <laughs> God, that will slide easily. Let's put that back on. Oh, it just sounds so good. Let me open the window. Oh, on the gear shift, you see where the power comes back in? It will suddenly start sliding again. I mean, you're having to wrestle this car in these conditions. See, when I shift up, whoa, all of a sudden it will go because the traction has to recalibrate itself. Oh, that sound on the upshift. Listen. Oh, yes. Oh, this is just what you want to do. I could be giving you all sorts of technical feedback, but I don't care. I just want to drive and I just want to enjoy it. I want to go through the gears and I just want to have a good time. How can you not enjoy this? My God, is it fast as well when you put your foot down. I mean, I'm not even tickling the surface on what this car can do. It is rapid. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's so good. It's so good. There aren't many, like someone asked me not long ago, if you could have one car that's being made today, which is the one that gets you proper excited? Honestly, this is definitely qualifying very high up in that list right now. It is just, exactly what you hope it would be. Right, and we're back on this road now with a slightly better camera angle. Yeah, I ended up watching that right after I filmed it and saw that it was a little too high on here, but it was still usable content, so I hope that was okay for you guys. The fact that this car can be such a demon, I think is incredible. So you have these complete two characters. You have the GT, and then you have that terrifying, wants to bite your head off demon under the hood, you know, this recipe is, it just doesn't really get much better than this. Ferrari, V12, front engine, rear wheel drive, 800 horsepower. I mean, it just does not get better. Let's put our bumpy road mode button back on as we talk. And this is what we've been asking for as car fans. And we have a car now available today that gives us what we're asking for. Naturally aspirated, loud, and with that demon-esque feel where you will take this car on a drive, if you take it on a country road, if you take it in weather like this, it will feel like it's trying to kill you and it will give you that adrenaline rush. And that's what a car like this should be. If you want a car that's easy to exploit and get the most out of, then there's plenty of options out there. I mean, there's the Puro Sangue. Uh, you can go get a Porsche Turbo, four-wheel drive. Like, there are cars out there. If you want a car that will make the hairs on your arms stand on the end, give you goosebumps and really make you feel special and give you that adrenaline rush. And when you get to the top of that road that you've been driving will make you feel like, yes, I managed to do that. It was on edge, but I managed. I think that's what, as petrol heads, we really look for. And that's what that car's delivering. And it's kind of like a final hurrah to that. And I hope it's not a final hurrah, but you do wonder how much longer these kind of cars are going to exist and how much longer we're going to be able to enjoy this kind of a car so the fact that ferrari have gone ahead and and made this i just think is is fantastic and i think they should be applauded and i know i should probably be being more critical about certain things here or there yes the interior the buttons the this the that but to be honest you buy this car for the engine and the engine is phenomenal so as far as i'm concerned that makes that this car as a whole phenomenal oh 
and the gearbox is just the cherry on the cake. I mean, it's just egging, edging you on. It wants you to push it harder. Let's put over here. Hopefully no one comes. Handbrake on. Turn it last rev. How good does that sound? Wow, I must have marks on my forehead. What a car. What a drive. Dodici cilindri. If ever you're lucky enough to get in one, see one, hear one, please do. What an experience. Huge thank you to Ferrari for having me. Please subscribe if you aren't already. I know I haven't made many videos lately, but uh, they'll be back one by one. These POV drives will be back. See you soon. Cheers.